It is the 29th of the 11th, 2011, and this is today's climate change update. Well, let's go ahead and start on SOT.net tonight. South Africa heavy downpour kills eight people. At least eight people were reported dead. About 700 houses have been destroyed and thousands have been left displaced in Kawazula, Natal, following last night's heavy downpour, uh, the disaster management unit said on Monday. Uh, they're saying 62.6 uh, millimeters of rain fell in one night, uh, which had already recorded 209.6 millimeters for November, almost double its average. And they are holding a big UN woo woo uh, global warming climate change meeting down there um, to discuss what they are proposing to do um, with the carbon tax and all of that. Um, and they're using this as an excuse as far as the extreme weather changes um, is part of the climate change um, situation. But I'm telling you, your SUV is not causing this. Uh, snow November surprise. Why Deep South is seeing frosty weather. Uh, weird weather reversal. Cities in the Deep South are under winter weather advisories, while northern cities, more accustomed to snow this time of year, are flirting with record high temperatures. From Memphis, Tennessee to Atlanta, rare southern snow may coat cities tonight. As temperatures and precipitation continue to fall, the southern side into winter is due to cold bubble that formed over the south, said forecaster uh, for the National Weather Service. Where an inch of snow is expected. And they're expecting between 1 to 5 through the snowstorm and uh, why the northern cities are seeing unusually warm weather. New winter storm threatens Sweden. Uh, the storm that battered Scandinavia over the past few days have, has lulled. But as parts of southern Sweden are still being battle, battling to get their power grid back on, forecasters warn that new fronts of strong winds are predicted to hit the region midweek. And they have over 80,000 people without power. They have another story on a 6.4 magnitude earthquake in Papua New Guinea today. Uh, that's on the Ring of Fire. I believe it's 50 kilometers deep. And uh, they're just catching up with the, the Fukushima story I covered a couple days ago. Cesium from Fukushima plant fell all over Japan. Radioactive substances from the crippled Fukushima number one nuclear power plant have now been confirmed in all prefectures, including Uruma, Okinawa Prefecture, about 1,700 kilometers from the plant, according to the science ministry. And this thing has completely covered, remember they were telling you 10% was affected of the country? This story tells you 100% of Japan has now has radioactive uh, contamination due to the Fukushima um, disaster. And uh, they're covering rare storm system track... Uh, Circa November 2004 aims Southern California this week, and that's that tight-knit little storm that's going to roll in. Um, and they're saying it could be potentially interesting for the southwestern United States on Thursday and Friday. Over to the extinction protocol, about the only thing they've got going on tonight, Pan American Volcanic Awakening, Ecuador's Tungura, I'm not going to kill it, volcano goes into convulsions. Uh, authorities in the South American nation of Ecuador on Monday afternoon urged residents near the volcano to evacuate after a rapid increase of volcanic activity. Ecuador's Geophysical Institute of National Technology School said um, the volcano had three pyroclastic boulder flows towards the south around 7.35 a.m. local time on Monday. And they, of course, they've got the war drums beating, the ra uh, sabers rattling, and we're all watching what's going on in the Middle East. Um, if you were not aware, um, Kuwaiti's cabinet has resigned after protesters and opposition deputies demanded that the prime minister step down over allegations of corruption. State-run television has reported. And so our little enclave in Kuwait is falling apart. And uh, that's about all new they have tonight. Over to the RSOE, of course they've got the volcano activity in Ecuador and Colombia. I remember I reported on that volcanoes ready to pop at any time. Um, they're still warning residents. 
the severe drought in Mexico. It's just extreme um, sad situations for many, many provinces, multi-states. Um, forest fire in, Aust in Western Australia between Gracetown and Ellenbrook still up on the grid. Uh, we got a heat wave in South Korea above normal temperatures. Um, the cold wave in the south of the United States, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and Arkansas. Um, volcano activity in Bolivia. Uh, now they say there's a there's a volcano there that's swelling, and um, they're setting up seismographs all around this thing, and it hasn't erupted in like 1,500 years or something like that. Uh, but we've got another. I'm not going to slur the name either. <clears throat> but we've got another volcano, this one in Europe, gearing up. And forest fires in Bulgaria. Apparently it was caused by arson. That's a pretty extreme fire. Uh, they say this one's definitely out of season. It's a little late for uh, um, big fires in Bulgaria, which is not uncommon in late summer and early fall. And, of course, the extreme weather coming out of Sweden. Uh, we've got flooding out of uh, Australia still in the New South Wales. Um, that other one. Oh, the environmental pollution that, that spill in Brazil. Uh, apparently Chevron was doing a test drill and um, they had some back pressure and they said it popped or something and basically a crack formed in the seafloor and oil is seeping from a crack in the seafloor from deep, um, deep oil, deep water drilling. So here we go again with the Chevron. Um, they're not making big panic alarms on this one. Uh, it's out in the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, that's a lot of water. And uh, the Canary Islands uh, volcano, uh, El Euro. Um, it's still activities going on, uh, volcanoes and whatnot. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye on, of course. And that's about all I have climate change wise tonight. Now over to the nuclear stuff. I'm just going to do the E&E &E news. Uh, Tokyo professor on NHK breach of containment at reactor number two, extremely grave, calls for investigation. Much more prominent radiation spike after number two trouble. Yet TEPCO now says no explosion occurred, and we all watched it. 30 microsieverts per hour in uh, Nikko City. 150 kilometers from Fukushima meltdowns, and they have a video attached with that one as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the e EXSKF is reporting some terminal feeling at Fukushima number one, where, where all they could do is monitor the gauges. More on temperature readings at reactor number two. Um, so that's gearing up. And I'm going to leave you with this last headline tonight. World Health Organization beholden to the IAEA since 1959. They can't release a report without their agreement. It's like having Dracula guard the blood bank, and they have a video on that as well. So heads up, and um, thanks for your support. And of course, if I missed anything, leave your comments or attach your videos below. Have fun today, and enjoy what you can.